thus far we have taken care of all of this part of the schematic for each of the relays. Moving on, we have ran this line down to the side of the relays coil. We've added in our LED and the ground for that LED. So we have our load taken care of. What else remains as far as this diagram goes? We have to add the control lines in the end, but to take care of what's left on this schematic, first thing we can do is add in these NPN transistors and we can run a wire from the negative side of the coil to the collector of that first NPN. These two NPNs are in series and the particular NPNs I'm using the flat side is pointed to the right hand side of the board but as with PMPs you can test to find out what the orientation of the collector and the emitter is. In the case of these style transistors normally all you have to do is touch put your meter in diode mode touch the red lead of the meter here given that it's an NPN if it's a PMP you touch the negative lead here but given this is an NPN you touch the red lead of your meter here and then touch the black lead of your meter here and touch it here touch it here write the number down touch it here write the number down whichever of the two has the highest number will be your emitter the one with the lowest number will be your collector and in this case we want the collector in the direction of the coal and the emitter toward ground. And in the case of these, that's the flat side to the right for me. But for you, it may be that way. Just depends on the internal structure of your particular transistor. You just need to check. This is one of those gotchas that it will sort of work even if you reverse it, but once you hook all of this together, if these are in backwards, it'll stop working and you'll wonder why. <laughs> Now, I've had it happen to me many times. Best practice, verify which leg is the emitter and the collector before you build the whole circuit and find out later that, oh, I need to turn those around maybe. Let's add these to the board. What we'll add is a wire from the ground side of this coal and the orientation we're using it down to the collector of this first MPN, and then we'll add a second MPN in series with it, the emitter of the first MPN, the, the emitter leg, will be in the same row of the breadboard as the collector leg of the second MPN. We can add our piece of wire from the low side of the coal, in our case, to a row in the breadboard. Like that. Then we can add the collector of our first MPN. In my case, it's this leg with the flat side to the right, like this. We'll add that collector leg in the same row as that wire. Next, we'll get a second NPN. Same orientation for me with the flat side that way. Take the collector of this NPN. It'll be in the same row as the emitter of the upper NPN. They're in series now. Like that. The collector leg or the emitter leg of the upper MPM is in the same rail as the collector leg of the second MPM. And then we have that wire going to the collector of the upper MPM over to what is the low side of our coal in the context of this circuit. And we need to repeat this procedure for the other two circuits. The end result, your board layout will look like this one, where each the collector of all the upper NPNs is connected via a wire, the low side of the coal, and then the emitter of the upper NPN is in the same row as the collector of the second NPN in each case. we can take care of these connections to the right hand side of the NPNs we just added. This is just an extra protection diode in case this diode misses some of the voltage spikes this one can catch them. If it happens to go to negative voltage this one can catch it as well as 
that one can catch it before it goes through the PMPs. This diode is probably sufficient to protect these MPNs, but adding this second one won't hurt a thing. It, if it protects, great. If it just sits there and does nothing, that's okay too. <laughs> but this there in case we ever need it, we'll connect a shock key diode with a cathode to the same row in the breadboard that the collector leg of that top MPN is located. We just added a black wire to the row in the breadboard the collector of the top MPN is located. Now we're going to add a diode with a cathode pointing toward, well in this case, the left side of the breadboard. We'll do that for each circuit. Here's our shock key diode with the cathode indicated by the gray band and the type I'm using. Here's the row in the breadboard that the collector of that NPN is located. We'll just connect the cathode of that diode and that rail and then the other leg of the diode and the ground rail. Like that. That's the orientation. Uh, let's add this same diode to each of the other two. We've added those three protection diodes with their cathodes pointing to what in our case is the low side of the coal. The last two things we need to add on the right hand side of these NPNs. On the top NPN we need to add a 10K resistor to ground. One leg of that 10K will be in the same row that the base of this upper NPN is located and then its opposing leg will be in the ground rail. On the bottom one we'll add a 10K resistor to the base leg of the bottom NPN and then the other leg of that resistor will go to VCC. Effectively pulling this NPN's base low, keeping it switched off when power is not being applied to this side of the NPN. It's pulled low. It's like a normally open button. There will be no continuity between the collector and the emitter when it has a 10K pull down resistor connected to its base. Whereas in this case we'll have a 10K pull up resistor effectively keeping this NPN switched on until we push our master reset. This will function as a normally closed switch in our circuit. So we need a 10K from the base leg, the row on the breadboard that the base leg of this NPN, the upper NPN is located to ground and then we'll need another 10K where the base leg of this lower NPN is located in the breadboard with the other side going to VCC. There's our upper NPN. Its base leg is located in this rail of the breadboard and we need a 10K resistor from this point to ground. Like that. 10K is in the same row as the base leg of that upper NPN and the other leg of that 10K is in the ground rail. Now we move to the second NPN, the lower one. In the case of this breadboard layout, we have our second 10K. We need to connect one leg of it in the row base leg of the NPNs located. Connect one leg of our 10K to that and then the other leg of that 10K goes to VCC positive rail. The upper one has pulled down to ground through this 10K. The lower one is pulled up to VCC with this 10K. We need to repeat that same procedure for the other two. That's how the breadboard looks once those 10Ks have been added to the schematic. The next thing we can do where the emitter leg is in the breadboard we can add wire from there to ground on the lower NPNs in each case. The middle leg to ground. The middle leg, the lower NPN, it's right here. We need to add a wire from there to the ground rail. And then repeat this same procedure with the other two. Now we have our BCC line coming into this other coal and now we have a line when these NPNs are conducting all the way to ground and we're controlling when these are actually conducting and when they're not. And there's the lines. To the row in the breadboard that the base of each of these NPNs is located we'll add a 1K resistor for each one. Here's the row that the base leg 
of this, this upper end pin is located. And there's the row where the base leg of the lower end pin is located. We need a 1K, one leg of the 1K resistor here, the other leg in a row over the trough of the breadboard to this side. One leg of the 1K here, the other leg over here. One leg of the 1K here, the other leg here. Like that. So that one leg of this 1K is in the same row as the base leg, which is also the same row that this 10K pull down, in the case of the top end pins located. Then we have one leg of the lower 1K in a row over here on the other side of the trough of the breadboard. Its other leg is in the same row as the base of the lower end PN, which is just happens to be the same row that this 10K pull up resistor is located as far as the lower NPN goes. We need to add these 1Ks to the bases of the other two. There's the completed shot of adding those 1K resistors to the bases of each of the NPNs. At this stage, we can add power to the circuit and perform another test. Just to verify that we have connected everything properly, what we should be able to do at this stage is to take a jumper wire, hook it into the row, that the upper MPN space resistor is located and when we plug the other end of the jumper wire into the VCC rail that LED should light up and it does. This is going to eventually be where our latch control wire will connect. So we are able to selectively turn on, turn off our load by applying positive VCC to the base of that upper NPN. And what that tells us is that the lower NPN we've pulled its base up to VCC with this 10K resistor so by being able to plug the wire in at this stage tells us not only that this NPN is conducting, it's acting as a normally closed switch via that 10K pull up to its base as well as having this LED on when we apply positive voltage to the base resistor of this upper NPN also tells us that our upper two PMPs are also in the closed state or conductive state. Currents flowing from this positive rail of the breadboard across the emitter collector, the emitter collector of those PMPs through this wire energizing the coal of our relay, in turn flipping the flipper from the normally closed contact to the normally open contact, lighting up our LED, and then it's through this line across the collector emitter of the top NPN, as long as power is being applied to its base, across the collector emitter of the bottom NPN onto ground. And we need to perform this test on the other two circuits as well. Take the jumper wire, connect it to the row that the base resistor of the upper NPN is located, and when we put it to the VCC rail, the yellow LED should light up if we've done everything right, and it does. We move to the final relay circuit C, connect the jumper wire to the base of the upper NPN's base resistor, and then touch it touch your other end of your jumper wire to the VCC rail. The green LED should light up. It should go off when you release the wire. It should light up when you plug it in. Okay, if one of these LEDs didn't light up for you, check your emitter collector orientation. Make sure you have that right. As well as check that you have this pull down resistor to the base of the upper NPN. Make sure it's in the ground rail. And make sure that the bait, this 10K pull up to the base of the lower NPN is in the VCC rail. It's easy to mix those up at times. It's just something to check. If everything's worked, we're ready to move forward.